And big up uh, Retroactive as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe to their channel. They're fucking brilliant. Um, let's go. Let's do this. What made you go and be like, all right, I'm going to go do stand-up comedy and go bomb forever? Uh, <laughs> well, bomb forever is interesting. The Brendan Shaw Paradox. On paper, he's a family man, a multi-millionaire, an ex-UFC fighter, a success by any measure. Unfortunately, his venture into comedy led to two of the lowest rated specials of all time and began his descent to one of the most disliked people online. All public figures face constant scrutiny, but it's a rare and unique circumstance, even for a disliked comic, to become the famous of a dedicated anti-fan base of 150,000 that parody <laughs> his every word and mannerism. Nor thousands upon thousands of videos. By the way, talking, going back to that prime energy drink Halloween outfit. For a dislike comic to become the face of a dedicated anti- Allegedly, he deleted this from his Instagram, but not his Twitter. I wonder why. Hmm. What do you say? Oh, you want me to turn up the video, the video volume? Okay, cool. One second, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. It's actually turned up all the way, you know. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, let me let me let me add a filter on there. Bear with me a second. I add a filter, and let's put it up to let's put, let's put it up to five dB. What are you saying about this? I will put it to five dB. Fan base of 150,000 that parody his every word and mannerism. Nor thousands upon thousands of videos that often get more views than he does on his own channel. So, why is Brendan Shaw different? Well, he's funny to parody, sure, but the further down the iceberg, he isn't viewed kindly for various reasons nepotism, lying, joke theft allegations, rudely interrupting people, being adamant he's right when he's wrong about basic knowledge like Africa being a continent. Africa is a country. Basically, you can't spend Spend hours a week on camera and be this loose. I'm starting to get to a point now where I think, hmm. I'm starting to think now, was Brendan just always like this? Maybe he was never actually, maybe what actually happened, because I was a fan of T-Fat Cave when it started, right? Maybe when it started, they just weren't that well known enough. We didn't have enough information. We didn't have enough reference points. We didn't have enough content to, you know, micro-analyze and stuff, right? We kind of had just had to go off what we were just seeing episode in, episode out. Maybe he didn't actually turn into anything. Maybe he was always that guy, but because we just saw more content, that's when we started to realize, oh shit, this guy's a fucking piece of shit. Maybe that's what happened, because I'm starting to believe that that might be the case. I don't think you turn into being someone like that, in a, you know? Ah, see? My friend warned me in 2016. Robert Minnes is saying. Okay, exactly. Even Doug. Yeah, big up Doug the Flow. But, um, thank you for joining, brother. Okay, so I'm, look at me figuring this out in real time like a fucking ape. Maybe he was always bad. <laughs> I know, I'm fucking dumb. Anyway, let's play this. <laughs> People will notice and turn you into a continuous meme that never ends. While Joe Rogan was just trying to help his friend transition from fighting to a new career, comedy is all about paying your dues and earning your place. Nepotism or an unearned position via connections without the talent to back it up always backfires. Tony Hinchcliffe and Steve-O, Joey Diaz, Tim Dillon, many publicly belittled Shaw specials because he simply wasn't ready. Uh, I was fascinated by the entire <laughs> <laughs> The question is, what, did, did it have to be a special? And would have never been in that position without connections slash holding the record for the most appearances on JRE Crazy. as it became the biggest podcast globally. Here's another big reason. One cannot allegedly pathologically lie across thousands of podcasts. Okay, to go over the nepotism thing quickly, I also think that was one of the biggest, biggest, biggest own goals Brendan ever did. That whole complete rejection of like the... I won't say the protocols, but the standard practice in comedy of like going to do open mics and earning your spot that way and then blah -de blah blah and then working your way up, right? Just this idea that he could just take his podcast fame and then kind of jump some steps was insane. I don't think it's his, it's not his fault that his podcast was really successful and popular at the beginning and he got a lot of people turning up to his shows that probably didn't equate to the talent level or to his experience level, right? If you're like one year in, but you've got a popping podcast and you've got a hundred you know a thousand people turning up to your shows you know it's not your fault you're not fucking Dave Chappelle you know what I mean it's just these guys like you for your podcast they want to see you but I also think he probably could have taken a active step to try to get better and do the right things and try to get that level of try to match 
tried to get his comedy to match his fucking celebrity quote-unquote status at that time he completely didn't want to do that he actually thought he was a unicorn i remember there was old clips of him basically saying that 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 route of going down the comedy route and doing open mics was not for him that's other people's journey my journey's different it's like not really dude isn't it, it's, it you basically shown that that different journey doesn't work cast without people beginning to turn against you there's no better example than this. He goes, my doctor said these are actually better for you. They're not. He goes, how do you know? Google it, dude. They're not. He goes, really? I know you're in the trash. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The same way Brendan has to repeat exactly what Joe says back to him like a yes man parrot. He's for real. He's for real. He also has to change his stories to be... Yo, big up the stream chat. You guys are fucking amazing. I've seen this as well. Um, Stina Goose says, I've been hating him since Ultimate Fighter. He's always been a douche. Yeah, you see old posts of like, I forgot what fight, what forum it was. Maybe it was Sherdog or another one. There was, a, there was another MMA forum that was really popular back in the days. And you see some old comments like from archive.com and shit, right? And it's like, rah, there were people that were like, dunking and hating on brendan since then on those forums like calling it how much of a douche he was so it was probably always there to be completely fair the mma community knew about him from way back but obviously at that time it was really small really niche so not a lot of people kind of really cared but obviously once the mma became bigger ufc became bigger he became bigger then obviously the light was shining on him a bit more but you can find old forum posts like literally from the early 2000s like talking about how much of a douche brendan is it's fucking crazy um Brendan's been, yeah, Doxy the Flow, Brendan's been, uh, yeah, George Carter, exactly, Coiler. Brendan's been trying to overcompensate since Travis Brown destroyed him in front of his ex-girlfriend, ex exactly. The Watcher, bro, these interviews of him when he didn't have CTE and he could talk normal, but he still was talking about haters and could change their minds with a sit down and sit and talk and they would be fans. Yeah, exactly, I remember that too, I remember that, I remember that. Be the winner in the end to impress him. Joe was having none of it and Brendan forgot that he'd already told this story with a different ending. So he's like, who says that? Like, oh. Wow. He's like, my doctor says better. This is why he told me to start vaping. Like, but it, I don't think it is. And he's like, all right, man. And they just walked off. Never talked to him again. Or egregiously lifting stand-up bits from Bill Burr's infamous rant about Philadelphia, but screwing up the delivery and thinking, yeah, no one will notice. Now, Paul, tell me the real. Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a guy who doesn't even exist. There's about 20 more decent examples where it feels like he's just watching classic stand-up sets and pulling a Carlos Mencia. Why would it matter to you? If Mencia's current career is anything to go by, this could be Shorb's eventual end path if something doesn't change. Especially after Rogan said- But I've heard that Carlos Mencia actually sells tickets. Is that true? I've heard Carlos Mencia does pretty well still. That's the actual funny thing about it. Obviously, it derailed his you know career a bit when he went up against Joe, but I've heard Carlos Mencia still does pretty well on tour and stuff. That he needs a handler, not the best comic, but he's a good guy. Shorb's ex-assistant claimed that Rogan was actually happy to be now further away from clingy Shorb. <laughs> Picking up my car. <laughs> when you repeat these kind of behaviors for five to six years straight, you begin to lose support from all sides, and now searching his name leads to all sorts of viral criticism, even urinating in his sink at Yo, work. Yo, big up Silux. <laughs> wild one, wild one, Silux. What boss that'd be. But people would rather watch cut up clips than actually watch his podcast, as his blunders are much funnier than the whole show. Add on top allegedly buying fake views according to his ex-assistant for his YouTube special which can truly destroy your channel as now YouTube would be recommending his videos to bots and slowly your average watch time and ability to get your audience to even click the video begins to dwindle. Mm. While Callan publicly called out Shorb's boisterous behavior in front of him. I, I didn't know you were on Adderall. No one did. <clears throat> right, but you were, so you would, you would, you would constantly, would right, <laughs> but you would constantly go, oh, I never understood what was going no. on. Most ignore his embellishments i do love the how the adderall arc was basically proven correct that was another kind of prediction or guess that people made in the final kid subreddit who you know people that have been kind of very good on the course from brendan from a while back and don't get me wrong it's not crazy because you know he's a pretty easy guy to read but it's interesting that a lot of these guys predictions have been proven right like that guy's that guy's on adderall <laughs> you know what i mean and it was definitely proven right when all the fucking leaks came out and b joe exposed it or strange moments leading viewers to be quite brutal in the comment section to make up for it especially taking lots of detrimental substances together hoping for mental acuity but probably just enhancing the chance of a verbal blunder and heart palpitations three 30 milligram adderalls a day for psychiatric nah, help it, no uh, he doesn't dark the doctor yo cody uh porter big up you 
Um, good con- comment here. I find him ridiculous. I don't hate him though. I hate Jordan Peterson type um, Tate types. Bappe is just an oblivious poser. I just I don't think that's. Th- I understand what you're saying, but I think the Brendan thing having f- uh, kind of you know fall by a bit of the last couple of days about what I want to do in terms of maybe pivoting the content away from covering this sort because it's getting boring. But I think the f- the thing about the Brendan thing which makes it s- so hard to look away is that I just think. There is, and I, maybe I need to read a book about it and find out what the actual term is and get a little bit more clued up on it. But there's something about somebody that you can see who is quote unquote successful, but in your eyes or in your head, you just don't think it's deserving. Like they're an absolute redact. It's just impossible not to not hate that person or not to not think they're a redact. You know what I mean? Or not to not look away. There's something about that. And maybe it's a, to do with the economy and, you know, recession and inflation and unemployment. Who knows? But there is something highly offensive, I think, for like normal humans, civilians, to see somebody who just looks like they're undeserving of their success. And I think Brendan, unfortunately, embodies all of that. That's a problem. And he doesn't try to like even hide it. He doesn't try to like make himself better or because I think there is a utility to faking it until you make it there's a utility in it right in lying about yourself and buying views buying followers to look a certain way but i've always believed in the idea of like, if you're gonna fake it till you make it when you make it then become real quote unquote right work on yourself develop your act whatever it may be but it seems like with him he faked it till he made it and then he's just like nah i don't need to do any more work i don't need to go back and fix things or whatever i don't need to like turn you leaf this is good like once you got the introduction from Rogan and kind of got grand, you know, grandfather did in that way in some respects, or the golden handshake stuff on the silver platter, or blah blah blah. It's just gone from complete shit. So I think that's the main issue he has, and obviously personality wise, um, it's hard to like somebody when they always lie, right? It's hard to like someone when you think they're a bully. It's hard to like someone when they're always interrupting, when it's super unfunny. It's just so much about him that's just fundamentally like, you know people wouldn't like anyway like you, you take little attributes of him and you put it in different people like you split it across different people you wouldn't like those people either do you know what I mean but he seems to embody all of it in one person so I think that's the major thing so I don't think it's it may be not as deep as like hating him as a human being but he's just got so many hateable characteristics personality traits he just finds it, it's just hard to root for the guy you know what I mean it's just it's kind of offensive to your intelligence and to your emotional EQ or whatnot to kind of just be like, okay, it's fine. He lies. It's okay. He embellishes. It's okay. He, you know, bullies. It's okay. Um, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's just like, oh, it's hard to fucking stomach it. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Dark web. No. Say that off air. Why? And thus, the horrible cycle Shorb has found himself in continues. Bits like Mexican cookie being a cookie with salsa on it. <laughs> his pretentious comment about homeless people and cats judging his work forming into what Brendan Shaw haters call themselves. So much of what Brendan has said over the years is repeated ad nauseum, forming a strange meme culture of, uh, I don't know, Shawbisms or Shawb speak. Who knows what the f- it is? With his anti fans mimicking his words or <laughs> pronouncing it. Pronouncement? Many celebrities have haters, but it is truly on another level with Shorb. Some get too personal about his family, which he claimed against YouTuber Unique. But he lost half a million and the court case to an alleged drunk that represented himself. With insufficient evidence of stalking, harassment, defamation. That again was another insane own goal, in it? Suing Unique was probably, on paper it looked like an easy, you know, an easy fucking win. But the function of it was just so fucking dumb because if anything it was a fucking barbara streisand effect right in fucking four hate in 4k like trying to sue this guy for basically clipping a section of the live of the live stream where it looked like you were trying to cheat on your wife it's like what are you doing <laughs> and then that invited all the eyes of all these other big youtubers like fucking sir moist and h3h3 H3 and stuff to come dunking on him it just brought him so much unnecessary attention and eyes that he didn't need so it was really another another epic epic on goal he really is the you know he really as much as people as much as he likes us as much as brendan likes to make it seem like the haters are the reasons for all of his fucking downfall and whatnot and the bad things in his life. He really is the architect of his own misery, really and truly, to be fair. He's just way too much of a read that to realize it and change course. ...type claims he was trying to find against Unique for his coverage of public internet drama. 
When you're allegedly trying to sleep with woke or insane podcast hosts while married, you're gonna get the walk to your truck meme. When you claim Bobby Lee and Kalila Kuhn from Tiger Belly Podcast, I'm not gonna lie. I quite, I quite like that t-shirt. the walk to your. I quite like that t-shirt. I'm not gonna lie. That design's actually quite cool. I quite like that tee. I'm not gonna lie. I quite like that tree. Your truck meme. When you claim Bobby Lee and Kalila Kuhn from Tiger Belly Podcast are running the subreddit that hates you, say you have proof and never show anything. It's a masterclass. He definitely got scammed on that one, by the way. Whoever scammed him there, you've done a great job. And losing public favor. It's the unfortunate reality of being a media personality and being in the spotlight, but adding on top that you've become a meme and each day you only make it worse. Between that and the 1.6 million his management cast media and Colin Thompson just stole from him, I'd never advocate for handlers, but sure, really might need one. Theo Vaughn was also caught up in this theft and he knocked back the offer to join the new company as to him it was the same people who just ripped him off trying to convince him that shares in their new company would eventually pay him what he's owed. Using Theo's platform and fame to build another scam company essentially. Shorb however took this offer and the stock has fallen from $8 a share to $2.52 USD. To be fair to Brendan that was actually a good deal. He got the money he was owed to be fair to him. Um, he's never going to get that deal or he's never going to get given that money from any other podcast network ever. What was it, like 1.6 million he got from that podcast one company? So he got the money that he was owed to him. And, you know, it's basically like, I wouldn't say it's free money, but it's money he's never going to get anyway in terms of ads because unfortunately his podcast has obviously decreased in terms of popularity over the years. So it's actually a good deal that he took that, to be fair. Business aside, if he truly worked at his craft, he could probably figure it out. He has the time and money for mentorship and growth to slowly turn the tide of public opinion, but instead it's just a daily impossible to keep up with tidal wave of why did you do that moments. His 1 million follower Instagram page even gets minimal engagement outside of deleted hate comments. Yeah, and this, this is another fucking dumb own goal too. This fake it to your make it thing. That's when it comes to bite you in the ass. Like, buying followers. Like... You buy followers, most likely Brendan's account, I would say, if it was real and he didn't buy followers or having, you know, in that regard, he might be up to like 500,000, you know, actual real followers. I could believe that. If he actually just grafted and just posted content on there, you know, whatever, tried to make it somewhat, you know, appealing to his fans, he could actually get 500,000. I'm pretty sure, especially with the amount of times he's been on Rogan and whatnot, and his podcast being successful in the beginning. But he wanted to look like a big shot. So obviously he wanted to get that 1 million, so he got it. So I'm, I'm more, I would hazard a guess that most likely he bought like a crazy package, like a half a million package. That's why his fucking metrics are so horrible. He probably was on... 300,000 at one point or maybe 500,000 and then he actually bought a package of like 500 followers 500,000 followers and that completely screwed his fucking metrics and you know his engagement on his fucking Instagram account and now it looks like he's got a clearly a you know an Instagram that's got paid followers on it because he hardly gets any engagement the pictures don't get hardly as many likes as a 1 million account that's probably got legit followers it's actually a real dumb move really but hey what do you expect from him comments and blocking people but sometimes he even replies to his anti-fans and to the surprise of nobody he's the kind of guy that parks across two lanes because of course he is topped off by posting it on his story even in a small example like this he lies multiple times there are clearly other cars in the background it's still daylight so it's definitely before 5 p.m and sure brents a space within a studio which doesn't entitle him to park like a that's a really good way to kind of break down brendan and that's the thing that i've always been fascinated about the lying about things that don't matter. This guy messages you, right? A you know, a hater, a troll, whatever on Instagram. You could easily just ignore it. You could send the smiley emoji. You could just double tap the fucking comment sarcastically and love it and move on. You don't need to explain yourself. But when he does explain himself, he just lies. So that's the thing that's really fascinating about the guy. He like he lies about things that he doesn't even need to lie about. Like whose business is it? How you park your car? However douchey it is, you can do what the fuck you want, right? They're not going to tell you to do anything. They can't force you to park your car or the way once the way they wanted to get parked. Whatever you could just tell them to get fucked. But instead, <laughs> he says, "I do. It's after hours and it's my studio." It's like what? <laughs> I fucking love him, man.
but it's not surprising. This is the same guy who said he could beat Prime Mike Tyson and that he's overrated, and then sucked up to him dearly for his appearance on Food Truck Diaries. Who gives a f what Mike Tyson says? To be honest, if Mike Tyson tells me something about boxing, I'm listening to Mike Tyson on boxing. I don't know why these young kids Dude. don't listen. If it's not trying to piss Mike off, it's confusing him to death with ridiculous interruptions. No, I'd love to see fight John App. Yo. The way Mike Tyson was just mean mugging him this complete time was so hilarious. And Brendan did not want to make eye contact with me. He just kept doing this, looking that way, looking that. He did not want to make any eye contact with Mike. It was so fucking hilarious. Like, to give you a little bit of brief background, there were, you know, I think, what was happening? I, I actually don't know what happened. Why did she spark this? I'm not too sure if Brendan was making some jokes aimed at Brendan, aimed at Tyson that he didn't like, or if. Maybe someone told Tyson the comments that Brendan did be said before about him, but something happened. There was a little bit of static, and then uh, <laughs> I think Tyson went to check the temperature, and he basically started standing in front of him as he picked apart the fucking, you know, the f the fucking fruit platter in front of him. It was fucking incredible. I loved everything about it. Africa, France. Who the hell yeah. is John Africa? The man just doesn't learn, reflect, grow, or realize that people will notice that you're wildly inconsistent. Thousands of podcast appearances to his name across so many shows, and he still regularly pisses off his guest, host, the few fans he has left, and potential fans. People were much more favorable of Shorb in his fighting days, or even in early podcasts, as ego is expected, and he hadn't inspired a whole Bible-length lore around himself yet. But as Tim Dillon pointed out, to see a man go from expert at strangling to expert at bad Mexican jokes, please laugh. Oh, he's gay! <laughs> he has slowly alienated much of his original fan base through years of silly behavior. The psychological intrigue of millions of online viewers wanting to see a public figure fall apart can't be discounted either. The human nature of watching a train wreck, it's horrible, but we can't look away. One year old was eating Doritos oh at six in the God. morning. His grandma's like, what? In the f Cause I don't know. He went Doritos. <laughs> Curiosity or the desire to witness the bad thing in whatever form is so we can understand it and hopefully avoid it ourselves. Add in today's parasocial, everybody's connected way of living being quite the drastic shift to what humans before us experienced. Now the sick intrigue is endless internet drama and whatever horrible dark web video was floating around on X that day. It's the only reason I can. And I think that's actually a really good point, but I think the the, the primary reason of it is like. I think some of us, even myself, you just, you can't figure out how we fucked it up when it's like easier to be, it's easier to get it right than to fuck it up. So that's usually, that's actually another fascinating part about Brendan. It's like, if you just would figure it out <laughs> and change his entire personality, which is obviously impossible, he could actually, you know, be okay. But it's the refusal to just, you know, do any of that sort of stuff and just go the opposite direction that just leaves you stunned. You're like, bro, you literally were gifted everything on the silver platter and you're still managing to fuck it up without even trying. It's actually impressive. See as to why analyzing his blunders has led to so much interest online continuously for years now. I love but it's it. worth Funeral noting that fit. many feel bad for the guy and think he needs help. There simply just isn't another comic or public figure alive who is as egregious on camera while being as funny to mock. Mm -hmm. Burt Kreischer's infamous pedestrian line is a great example. Anything perceived as pretentious by comedy fans will be mocked to death, but Shorbisms really take the cake. Usually apologizing destroys your career, but in Shorb's case, being more humble and owning things wouldn't hurt with his podcast audience. Some see the hate towards Shorb as overboard, and that his CTE from years of fighting is responsible for his vocal and behavioural blunders. A truly horrible disease, leaving once great athletes immobile, <laughs> and with not all athletes paid well, some struggle to provide for their families in later years and are gone before their time. Hence, Shorb's move into a lucrative industry without questionable UFC pay and head trauma. Maybe Shorb would be much better received by the public without suffering from this disease, as your original personality slowly is covered up by the immense changes that brain trauma can cause. If that's the case, it's both sad and a sense that maybe he shouldn't be talking for a living unless it's about fighting. <laughs> Throw in a few mentors and slowly improving his comedy and maybe, just maybe, he could turn the narrative around. But the masses on the internet will never leave alone a topic they find funny to mock. Until then, his unintentional blunders are making people laugh more than his stand-up, so... The first reverse comedian?
Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's not not gonna happen anytime soon. Um like um Dark City Flow said, let it change your change his entire personality. Lamau. Exactly. Not happening in any way, shape or form. Um too much to change, no little time. And also there's no incentive to change as well, do you know what I mean? He's already been successful this long anyway, being the way he is. Why would he change? There's no reason to do so. So I definitely don't see that happening anytime soon. But yeah, big up um retroactive. Um, absolutely banging channel make sure you subscribe to them i'll put actually let me show you the title of the video so you can see it but i'm sure most of you have seen it already um but it's a brendan Shaw paradox make sure you click on their video watch it check it out for yourself it's fucking banging it's fucking banging